The title of my talk today is New Grange, The Goddess and God Make Winter Solstice Love. I'm hoping to speak to your service committee for next year uh, for the winter solstice. I'm hoping everybody can come to my home in Palm Coast every morning from uh, October 31st, which we pagans call Salon, and come up every sunrise from October 31st through December 20th, and you will see uh, in the flatwoods behind my home, you can see that the sun continues to progress further and further <laughs> south till on December 21st for two or three days. It's the solstice, sol, S-O-L, which means sun, and the other part means still. So the solstice is the sun stands still. And then you can see, I mean, I see this every morning, the sun starts to come back northward as the days gets longer. And if any of you become Facebook friends with my lady, Michelle, uh, she goes out a lot of mornings uh, on the beach in Daytona Beach Shores and takes photos and posts them of the sunrise. And I'm sure, Michelle, you, you see over the course of the year, the sun gets further and further south at the point it rises. And then at the winter solstice, it starts coming back up. And it's just, it's the poetry of the universe. It's the poetry of motion, of the earth itself, of nature, of Gaia. Uh, we pagans, a lot of us pagans, Gaia is the great earth goddess. Um, I often wonder who is the first man or woman uh, or a conscious being to notice this phenomenon, but it goes way back. Um, and you're seeing, I guess, well, that's the photo that I, a couple of these photos I took when I was at Newgrange in 1995. Uh, but believe me, the more striking photos, those, those are not mine. Uh, Newgrange, and we're going to get more, I'm going to talk more about Newgrange, but th these slides are going to be cycling through. Um, Newgrange was built in about 3000 BCE before Common Era, so it's about 5000 years old. And it is a winter solstice sacred place. And we'll get to that. But cultures all around the world, uh, spiritual traditions and cultures, notice this turning of the sun. And so the solstice, both the winter solstice and the summer solstice, are celebrated in so many cultures. Of course, uh, in modern America and the West and Europe, uh, the solstice comes around uh, the time of Christmas. Um, in the third century in ancient Rome, in the third century, they celebrated uh, a holiday that they called Sol Invict Invicticus. Am I saying that correctly? Invictus. And that means the celebration of the unconquered sun. So this was being celebrated in the third century in Rome before it became Christianized. And that was uh, on December 25th, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. They noticed that the sun, about three days after the solstice, is like, oh, it's starting to come back, the unconquered sun. Uh, when Constantine became the emperor of the Roman Empire, and he Christianized it. Uh, some scholars say, um, and I, I, there's debate about this, but they say the, that December 25th was chosen as the time uh, to celebrate the birth of Christ because there's nothing in the Christian Bible that indicates that precisely. So a number of his, historians and scholars say that that day was chosen to supplant the pagan festival uh, of Yule. And also in ancient Rome, you may have heard of Saturnalia, which was party time <laughs> around this time. Feasting, gift giving, uh, kind of misrule, kind of rowdiness, uh, but they celebrated uh, the return of the sun uh, in style. And also uh, around this time uh, was, uh, 
I've seen it Mithra, M-I-T-H-R-A, or sometimes you see it Mithras. That was one of the ancient Middle Eastern gods. And supposedly the birth of Myth Mithra was around this time in late December. So the Christian birth of Jesus uh, was not the first uh, celebration to mark this time of year. Um, so why does the sun stand still on this day? Well, the ancient Irish figured it out. Uh, the ancient Irish. My heritage is Irish and French. I feel more connected to the Irish side, uh, but the ancient Irish figured it out. Um, the ancient uh, Celtic Irish god, the Dagda, D-A-G-D-A, and that's probably not a correct pronunciation. Even when I read how to pronounce the ancient Celtic goddess, god, gods and goddess names and place names, even the pronunciation key doesn't really make sense. Um, so anyway, I'm going to call him the, the Dagda. He was the main chief god. And the goddess Boan, B-O-A-N-D, uh, he had the hots for Boan. And Boan's husband, Elkmar, E-L-C-M-A-R is the uh, anglicized version. Anyway, her husband, Elkmar, had to go away for a day. And Dagda, the Dagda, is who's a... I'm just going to say it, a tricky bastard. He made the sun stand still for nine months. So Elkmar, uh, Bowen's husband, was gone for nine months. He thought it was the same day. It's like, oh, this is a really long day, but I don't have to be back yet. And the Dagda um, seduced Bowen, and they had a child. And that child is Angus, A-E-N-G-U-S, who became the Celtic god of love. So that's why the sun stands still. It's, it's all because of the dog. So you can take that to the bank. Um, now, this, this is New Grange. This is the entrance. I was there in 1995. I can't remember if that's the photo that I, I think that is the photo, I, one of the photos I took. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you some just some scientific factoids about New Grange. Uh, again, it was built around uh, 300 BCE before the Common Era. Uh, that makes it 500 years older than the Egyptian pyramids and about 1,500 years older than Stonehenge. Um, the mound is, have you noticed the aerial view that's been cycling through? Uh, so you can see the round circular. Uh, the mound is 36 feet high and about 280 feet in diameter across. And you you may have seen some of the white granite uh, set into the wall. The, and that's original equipment. That's not a modern addition. Uh, if you see, uh, it, uh, if you come upon New Grange, if you're traveling in Ireland, uh, one writer said it looks like a giant crystal egg gleaming in the sunlight. It's just uh, uh, it's just beautiful and, and so mystical in so many ways. But some more some more uh, factoids. Uh, oh, good, that came up just at the right time. This is a diagram of the passage that goes into New Grange. Um, the entrance is right here, and there's three recesses. And, and that passageway is about 62 feet long, uh, and the chamber inside, the roof is about 20 feet high. Uh, when I went there in 95, uh, you could just drive up to the place, and they give tours inside, so you had to, you know, stand in line and all that, but you could like park within a hundred feet of the place. When I went there in 2005, I was going to go again. However, uh, because we humans being what we are, we want to mess with stuff. So now you have to park at a visitor center three miles away and they bus people over there. So it's, which is probably a good thing because <laughs> We idiot humans will destroy beauty, you know, some of us. Um, but anyway, um, 
Yeah, the, the passage, uh, the chamber inside is about 20 feet high. Getting into uh, the entranceway, you have to climb over. Uh, there's an entrance stone. You've probably seen that big round oval slab. Uh, that's original equipment. So the, the entrance stone is right here, and you go in, and it's, it's a tight fit in places. Uh, so if, if you are a very large person, uh, it's, it, it can be difficult because in some places you have to do that. And I'm very claustrophobic. Uh, I'm, I'm very claustrophobic. Uh, but when I went there, I told myself I, I've come all the way across the Atlantic. I'm going to suck it up and go in to New Branch. And I, it, it was, you know, once I got inside, uh, that kind of claustrophobic panic kind of subsided. And the chamber inside was, uh, I don't know if there's, well, you see some of the spiral uh, triskelion. Markets here. Everything I've read, scholars really don't know what that, what that symbolizes. Some say that it, the River Boyne is about a half mile away, a historic river in Ireland. Some say it's just a representation of the swirls and eddies of the river, but they don't really know. And there's New Grange from, of course, that's at sunset. You can see the entranceway on this side. Anyway, back to the chamber. You go inside and the chamber, uh, 20 feet high, it's watertight. Uh, water doesn't get in there. And it's such a beautiful, it looks like you're in church. It's the ancients who created this. Uh, there's spiral patterns, the way the stones are set, the slabs of stone, very artfully. And I don't think I, there's a decent photo of the roof. And uh, my friend, John Hostetter, I don't, some of y'all may know him. He lived in New Smyrna. He was an actor. He retired. Uh, here in New Smyrna and played in rock bands. And I would do stories on him when I was in the news journal at the news journal. And he was also an artist. And when I saw one of his paintings, I was like, wow, I said, John, that looks like Newgrange. He said it is <laughs> because he had done this beautiful painting of the roof with all these geometric patterns. Uh, and it really is very churchy. Now, the main point of why we're talking about New Grange. So remember the Dagda and, you know, his lust for Boan? Well, that story is played out in New Grange. This is the entrance stone, and they put these steps in. Those were not theirs 5,000 years ago. So they put that so we humans scrambling to get inside would not destroy that entrance stone. But the main entrance is there, and right above is a square kind of opening. And guess when the sunrise shines? There's that right there. Guess when the sun, the rising sun, shines down through the passageway? The solstice. For about 17 minutes on December 21st, the rising sun will shine down. And myself and others uh, see that it's the phallic rays of the sun impregnating Mother Earth. So the passageway is, is very much uh, a, a vaginal passageway that leads to the womb. So this sacred erotic um, commonality of the universe, man, woman, male, female, procreation is acted out in the landscape of, of Newgrange. The sun, the solar sun god uh, makes love to the goddess of the earth and it used to be well. They still they they hold uh, lotteries to see who gets to go inside. Uh, you can go there and on the winter solstice at sunrise and go inside, but you have to win the lottery. Uh, I mean, they they literally pick names. Uh, and it used to be they had a waiting list. I think they changed their procedure 
uh, of how they do that. I think they have an annual lottery now. So if you want to go on the winter solstice, uh, good luck. But it's uh, my time in there, and, and it was with the tour tour guide. Uh, it was just uh, like I said, my panic kind of subsided, and uh, it is a considered a passage tomb. It's where the ancient Irish people uh, they would cremate remains uh, of the dead and take them into one of those three recesses at the end. Uh, and some scholars have speculated that it was only the royalty of the, the ancient Irish, that it wasn't everybody. And in this, what's called the Boyne Valley in that area for, I don't know, probably 10 square miles, there's 40 of these, what's called passage tombs, uh, where people were buried. They, they have found one uncremated body there, and they're not sure what that is doing uh, there in Newgrange. Um, but they, they, they buried their dead there, or at least some of their dead. Um, and now let's uh, have, this is by design. Uh, I want to lead us in what's called, some people call a uh, guided meditation. Uh, I prefer, kind of prefer the term trans journey. So a little bit of what's gonna happen with this, I'll ask you to close your eyes. Uh, if we can get the lights down, we'll, we'll make it as dark as we can. Um, there's no right or wrong about this. I, I hope you all will participate. Um, I'm going to guide us. You'll hear my voice. We're going to take a trance journey or a guided meditation into New Grange. There will be a time uh, I'll get to. Uh, you'll hear some salt drumming. Uh, you'll have your eyes closed. And when you hear the salt drumming, I'm going to be quiet. And we're going to sit in meditation and trance. It may seem like a long time. Uh, I, uh, because we're humans, we're not used to doing this. <laughs> um, the way trance journeys work, the, the, the two main tools are focus and sensory deprivation. So you, you, you will not have your vision, you'll be in darkness, and you'll be focusing your attention on what I lead you through. And the purpose of this is what I like to call, we alter our consciousness, A-L-T-E-R, to alter our consciousness, A-L-T-A-R. When we alter our consciousness uh, and we quiet what the Buddhists call the monkey mind, things happen. Uh, when I've done trans journeys, the first trans journey I ever did in the 1980s, uh, I went into a closet in my home, locked up all so it was totally dark and as quiet as I could be. And for some reason, uh, the spirit of Jim Morrison at the doors showed up in my consciousness. Yeah, and I wish I had written more about that. Uh, I just, uh, and also there was flame and fire. Um, and other times where I've done trans journeys at pagan gatherings and myself, um, one time I, I found myself going back to where I grew up in New Mexico and I encountered the spirit of a Navajo uh, in some of the ancient ruins there. Uh, another time I found myself in Ireland on top of Knock Moray at another passage town. So uh, try to let your mind be unfiltered. There's no wrong or right. Uh, if the monkey mind comes in and you start thinking, damn, I want a chocolate donut, that's okay. You know, don't, don't, there's no right or wrong, but try and get back. So I'll ask you to close your eyes and take a deep breath and exhale slowly. Take another deep breath and exhale and just. Relax, and we're standing outside of the tomb at New Range. You've seen the images here. So we're going to walk over 
the steps of that entrance stone. And it's still white, but you we're entering the tomb, the passageway, and there's just enough light ahead to see where you are walking. Very dim. It's cooler in here. Don't keep your breathing. Stay. And whatever thoughts come in, honor them. We're going to squeeze through the tomb, the passage, and you can feel the rocks on your fingers because it's so close. The earth is caressing you. You can't help but feel her stony energy, her heart. This is a place of burial and of death, but yet going in, you feel that it's there is life here. You can feel the heartbeat of God. You can feel the heartbeat of the ancients who created this sacred space. Let's move further down. We're walking and now we're in darkness. You are in total darkness. You can hear your own breath. You can hear your heartbeat. And you detect the presence in the tomb. It may be a god or goddess. It may be an ancestor, a deceased ancestor. It may be a deceased beloved. It may be anyone. Whatever this presence is, ask it silently, who are you? And listen to the reply. With your eyes still closed, we're going to make our way back out of the passage to and we feel the stones just ensconcing us so close. You're backing out in the darkness, and then you see the first rays of light of the sun rising on the winter solstice. You feel the sun energy. And suddenly, a place that honors the spirits who have left this world becomes a place of rebirth. The unconquered sun is returning life to 
Mother Earth, Gaia, the Earth Goddess. When you are ready, open your eyes. You look back to our world. I don't know, of course, we don't know the ancients who spent time inside of New Grange. Uh, it's a burial site, but we don't know what rituals they did. Uh, did they stay in there for days fasting? Some scholars have speculated that. But the very basics we do know, they went into the darkness and then they emerge back into the light. And that's one of the most simple but profound rituals that we humans experience every day. The sun disappears, night comes, the sun returns tomorrow. And I think sometimes myself, I'm pointing the finger at myself, we forget the sacredness of the rhythms of the world in which we live in. That's why I feel blessed where I live in Palm Coast to be able to see in the flatwoods. And there's some tree forest uh, there, but it's mostly flatwoods. And I can see the sacred movements of the sun and the earth. And the only takeaway I would ask uh, is that maybe you just become a bit more aware uh, not not for my sake, for your own sake, uh, the rhythms of uh, the earth that we experience. And Joe, there's Joe. Um, we are going to, kind of in honor of New Grange and the winter solstice, we're going to go outside. So we're in this kind of, I don't want to say tomb-like, but we're ensconced in this sacred space, that's sacred shelter in space. We're going to go outside and drum a little bit and conclude our service. Uh, I hope all of us can just make it out there in the small courtyard and Joe's going to lead us in a chant singing. Yes. Thank you all so much.